Metroid Prime successfully brought the Metroid series to 3D as well as starting the best era of the series. In the last Metroid video, I mentioned how there was a whole Metroid Prime trilogy, but we also got spin-offs and a few 2D games, and it was all thanks to Prime. Two years after Prime was released, Retro Studios would return for the sequel, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. While Prime 1 is considered a masterpiece by many, Prime 2 is barely talked about outside the Metroid fanbase. Why is that? Even if it was a disappointing follow-up to the first game, you would think people would talk about that. Now, I'm not saying I think this game is a disappointing sequel. I just find it interesting that this game is... I don't want to say forgotten, but it feels like nobody talks about this game. It feels like it got overshadowed, either by games that released at the same time, or by other games in its series. I see more people talking about Prime 3 than this one. Even though I don't hear people talk about this game often, when I do hear people talk about Echoes, they usually talk about how good it is. Some say it's even better than Prime 1. But playing this game is going to be interesting. I haven't done a complete playthrough of this game since my first playthrough of it, and that was a while ago. I remember liking this game and thinking it was better than the first game as well. But replaying Prime 1 reminded me that my opinions can change, considering I went into that game expecting to make a video where I talked about why I don't like Prime 1 but I ended up talking about why it's great. So I'm interested to see what I'm going to think about this game now that I like Prime 1. I should mention I'm playing the GameCube version of this game. I played the remaster for Prime 1, and Prime 3 can only be played with a Wii Remote and Nunchuck. So I thought why not play the original release of Prime 2. This game starts with that briefing and tells you exactly why Samus is here on this mission. The Galactic Federation lost contact with one of its teams, so Samus Aran is sent to find them. And thanks to a storm damaging her ship, Samus is stuck on the planet Aether for a while. The intro tutorial itself I think is okay. I love the atmosphere of the underground lab or factory and uh, oh. I think I know what happened to the Federation team. You see the corpses of some of the Galactic Federation soldiers, and you can clearly tell that something is wrong on Aether, and eventually you find out what has been doing all of this. While it isn't said yet, it's Dark Samus. Dark Samus was actually hinted at at the end of Prime 1, so I guess Retro knew Prime was going to be a massive hit. Right after we see Dark Samus, we are introduced to Metroid Prime 2's main gimmick, Dark Aether. I'll talk more about that in a bit, but as soon as Samus is brought to Dark Aether, she starts taking damage, and when Samus is brought back to Light Aether, she loses all of her upgrades, so we have to collect them again. This is a much better way for Samus to lose her upgrades, compared to the first game. Just like when Samus landed on Talon 4, this is when the game really starts. Unlike the first game though, where as soon as the prologue was done, the game for the most part stops having cutscenes about the story, and instead left that stuff in optional logs you can read with the visor. In Prime 2, they focus a bit more on the story, and there are actual cutscenes. Like the one that plays when Samus finds the Federation ship, or when you meet Umos, or Umos, I don't know. Either way, Umos tells Samus what's been going on in Aether. Apparently the Luminoff have been at war with the Ing for years, the Ing is the species that possessed those creatures that killed the Federation soldiers. The Luminoff tried their best to fight back against the Ing, but the Luminoff are now losing. Umos also explains how Dark Aether appeared. A meteor struck the planet, splitting it into two. Not literally into two pieces. The meteor created a dark version of Aether, which is where the Ing are from, and is where the portal brought Samus earlier. Umos tells Samus if they can collect the light of Aether and return it back to the temples, in each area on the planet, they can defeat the Ing and Dark Aether will disappear. So Samus travels across the planet and restores the light to the temples. While I usually prefer games like this to tell their stories through the environment like the 2D games did, I don't mind Prime 2 telling its story like this, also it does have some environmental storytelling. At first, a story-driven Metroid game sounds like it would be extremely linear, and wouldn't give the player much freedom, because if the game was too open, the player might see things out of order, unless it was designed like Breath of the Wild, where you learn more about the story by exploring. You will see things out of order, but the more memories you find, the more the story will start to make sense. Prime 2 kind of does both. Echoes is pretty linear, the map is split into five sections, the Aegon Waste, the Torvus Bog, Sanctuary Fortress, the Temple Grounds, and the Great Temple. The first four are the areas where you're going to be exploring, looking for items, and eventually restoring the temples. Unlike Prime 1, where the game made you go back and forth between the areas to get new power-ups so you can progress, in Echoes, once you're able to go to a new area, you're usually going to be there for a while, until you find all the keys in the dark version of the place so you can restore the temple. And then once you're able to go to the next place, you're going to be there until you restore that temple. There's not a lot of going back and forth, which was one of my biggest problems with the first game. There are a few moments where you have to backtrack to other areas, but it's never really that bad, because when you do have to go to a previous area, it's usually been a while since the last time you were there. So now that you have more upgrades, you can start collecting missile expansions and energy tanks that you might have missed. Another reason why I don't think the backtracking is as bad in Echoes is because the Great Temple and Temple Grounds. Each area has an elevator that connects to the Temple Grounds. The Temple Grounds have shortcuts so you can quickly go from one elevator to another or you can just go to the temple and take the elevator that brings you to whatever side you need. Think of the temple grounds and great temple as a place that just connects everything together. 
Also, there's this one time during the game where I was in Sanctuary Fortress, the hint popped up and told me I had to go all the way back to the Torvis Bog to get the power bomb. After I got the power bomb, instead of making me go back the way I just came from, there was an elevator that I can now go to that brought me right back to the Sanctuary Fortress. Just another way Retro Studios improved on the backtracking problem. So Prime 2 fixes the backtracking problem. How about exploration and combat? Well, both have seen some improvements. In the Prime 1 video, I said that the exploration was good and finding items was satisfying and rewarding. But I would say it's even more rewarding in Echoes. While missile expansions aren't super difficult to find and collect, it was the energy tanks that were always the most rewarding items to collect. Well, next to the upgrades. Most of the energy tanks usually make the player solve a puzzle before they can collect them, but my favorite type of puzzles in this game are the ones that make you go back and forth between light and dark aether. For example, in Sanctuary Fortress, to get one of the Sky Temple keys you have to keep switching between the two, until you're on a high enough platform to reach the key. That's a pretty simple example, but there are a few that get a bit more complicated. And you're going to want to explore and find as many items as you can in Prime 2, because this game is much harder than its predecessor. In my playthrough of Prime 1, I didn't die a single time, in Prime 2 I died a handful of times, mainly to bosses. The normal enemies around both worlds aren't very strong. The only time they're a threat is when they attack you and you're not in one of those bubble things in the dark world. Because if Samus isn't in one of those bubbles, she starts taking damage. Well, until you get the armor upgrade. Most of the boss fights in the dark world have moments where you have to leave these bubbles for a bit to dodge an attack. And it leads to some tense battles. And for the most part, these battles were never unfair because they always drop a lot of health. I did say most because there are three that are pretty annoying. The boost guardian is super hard to react to because of how fast it is. The alpha blog is hard to avoid because of a pretty small arena and the Spider Guardian. Okay, the fight on its own isn't bad. It's challenging, but not unfair. You just have to be quick with your bomb jumps. What makes this fight really annoying is when you die, the last save point was multiple rooms away. So to try again, you have to go through a bunch of rooms that you've already been through. So you can't just give it another go. Also, the bosses you fight in this game are the ones that took Samus' upgrades earlier in the game, which is pretty cool. Dark Samus also has some boss fights, but they're pretty lame. It's pretty much dodge and shoot. I'm not sure if the light beam does more damage to Dark Samus though. Samus does have some new beams in this game, the Light Beam, Dark Beam, and the Annihilator. The Light Beam hurts Dark enemies and vice versa, but for the first time in the series I believe, these beams have ammo counts, I'm not counting missiles. I remember during my first playthrough, I thought this could cause some problems because sometimes you need to shoot open a door using one of these beams. From what I know, there were never any moments where they were needed to progress and there wasn't a way to refill your ammo. Other than the new types of beams, the combat is pretty much the same as it was in Prime 1. Because of that, my opinion on the combat and Echoes is pretty much the same as it was in Prime 1. That being, it's not very interesting. But I still think it's an improvement over Prime 1 because at least Prime 2's bosses are a bit more difficult. One of my favorite things about Prime 1 was how immersive it was. In my opinion, Retro Studios did a great job at making the players feel like they were in the role of Samus Aran. I remember thinking Prime 1 did that the best, but I think Prime 2 does it just as well. When I talked about Prime 1, I mentioned the music helped with the atmosphere. And the same applies to Echoes. But one thing I wish I talked more about was Talon 4 itself. I mentioned the optional logs you can scan to learn more about the lore but those were a big part of why I loved the Prime games. The more you read those logs, the more you learn about the planet or planets you're on. To use Prime 1 as an example, in those logs they say the Phazon has been slowly killing the planet, and in around 25 years, the Phazon will kill all life on the planet. Stuff like that helps make the world of these games more interesting. Prime 2 also has some interesting logs. The ones I remember the most are the ones left by the soldiers. In these logs, they talk about the Ing and how dangerous they are. There are also a few where the soldiers talk about watching some of the others being slowly taken over by the Ing. Pretty much every corpse you find in this game will have a log entry that talks more about the Ing. Or they'll talk about what was happening before they died. Because of all this, I ended up using the scan visor way more than I did in the first game. I wanted to find all of these logbook entries and piece the story together. Earlier, I mentioned how this game has two ways of telling its story. I mentioned it's linear, and this is how it kind of tells its story like Breath of the Wild. You learn more about the story by finding the logbook entries. Echoes easily has my favorite story and setting in the series. One criticism I've heard about Prime 2 is the areas in this game aren't as distinct as the ones in Prime 1. That is true, there's no lava or icy areas in Echoes. But I actually prefer that. In my opinion, that makes Echo's world feel more real, like a real planet. The only one that I can see an argument for not fitting in is Sanctuary Fortress but it doesn't stand out too much in my opinion. One thing I never really questioned until I thought about it was how there were so many different types of biomes on Talon 4, and the only thing separating them were elevators. It really doesn't matter that much, but in my opinion, Prime 2's world feels more real. Although I will say each area in Dark Aether could have looked a little bit different. But using the scan visor reminded me that Prime 2 makes a small improvement to the visor. In Prime 1, everything that was scannable had a little square on it. Orange meant it was optional, and red meant it was an important scan. In Echoes, if an object is scannable, the whole thing is highlighted. Blue means it's optional, and red means it's important. This small improvement just makes it easier to immediately tell what's important in a room and what isn't. This was mainly useful in the Dark World. 
because like I said, if you don't have the right armor upgrade or aren't in one of those bubbles, you'll take damage. So being able to quickly see if anything's important or not was useful, especially at the end of the game because Prime 2 has its own version of the Chozo artifact hunt. Once you get the light suit, you're told to find the nine sky temple keys that are in Dark Aether. During my playthrough of Prime 1, I realized that you could get a lot of the Chozo artifacts before they're needed to progress. In Prime 2, I only had one of them before needing them to progress. To be fair, I remembered where the artifacts were in Prime 1, but I could only remember where a few were in Echoes. Even if I couldn't find many keys early on, I still think this hunt is better than the one in Prime 1. When you get the light suit, you can fast travel to any area's temple. This made searching for the keys a little less annoying. You need to use the dark visor to find the enemies that holds the keys. Once you do, just blow them up and collect the key. But once you do find all the keys, you can go to the Sky Temple. In the Sky Temple, you will fight the Emperor Ng. The fight isn't really that challenging, but trying to lock onto it during its first phase can feel a little janky. Thankfully, after that, the boss is pretty easy. After Samus defeats the Emperor Ng, it's time for an escape. And unlike Prime 1, where it was just a cutscene, in Echoes, you actually have to escape. Sort of. Once you get off the Sky Temple, you have to fight the final boss, Dark Samus, who is pretty easy once you know what to do. The timer from the escape is still going during this fight, but they give you plenty of time to defeat Dark Samus. And once you do, Samus escapes from the portal and Dark Aether disappears. This ending was always one of my favorites in the series. Instead of just escaping a planet or blowing up a planet, for the first time in the series, the player gets to see who they saved. We know at the end of these games that Samus saves the universe, but actually seeing the group we saved made this ending more impactful for me. And that was Prime 2. Overall, I still love this game, and I prefer it over its predecessor. But I can totally see why some people would prefer the first game. Echoes is a much harder game than Prime 1, and not everyone's going to like the darker tone in this game. But for me personally, I like the game having more challenging boss fights. And I like the darker tone compared to the first game. I also think the improvements to the level design, specifically limiting the amount of times you have to go back and forth between areas, makes Prime 2 a more enjoyable experience for me. It sucks that Prime 2 was overshadowed when it was originally released but maybe one day it'll be remastered like Prime 1 was. And maybe when that happens, more people will play and talk about Echoes. My next Metroid video will be about Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, which is a game I barely know anything about, because I've never finished it. But from what I've seen online, it seems to be a divisive one. Hopefully there won't be another 8 month long gap between Metroid videos. Anyway, thanks for watching.